What's up guys, in this video what I want to do is cover verifying trigonometric identities when we have to apply the Pythagorean identities. So it's very important as we know the one, the only, the most famous trigonometric identity of all, sine squared plus cosine squared equals one. Now I have plenty of videos of where this comes from, but basically it comes from the x and the y coordinates on the unit circle. So we know that y squared plus x squared is going to equal the hypotenuse squared, which on the unit circle is going to be a one. But for this video, I'm just going to hope that you can remember this one. And then also the other trigonometric identity just by simply dividing everything by a sine as well as a cosine. All right, now, so there we have it. Our three major Pythagorean identities that we're going to want to make sure we know, especially for this video. Now, one of the tricks I always tell students whenever they're simplifying or verifying identities, whenever you see a trigonometric function squared, always think Pythagorean identities. Now, that doesn't mean we're always going to be using our identities or every single function that is squared that you need to apply an identity, but it's just something for you to look into. Because remember, when we're trying to verify an identity, all we're simply trying to do is make the left-hand side equal equal to the right hand side. Basically what we want to do is simplify one side so it looks like the other. Now you can see here this left hand side is much more complicated than the right hand side. So that's what I'm going to go ahead and focus on. Now some students when doing a problem like this might say well why don't we go ahead and apply distributive property and there's nothing mathematically wrong with applying distributive property here and you'll also still get the exact same answer if that is what you choose to do. However to keep things kind of as simple and efficient I want you to look at this one minus secant squared of theta because if you see this that's very similar to what we have here. Now in this example I have tangent squared of theta plus one. So what if I subtracted a one on both sides, then I would have a tangent squared of theta is equal to a negative one plus a secant squared of theta. Now you might look at this and say, well, that's similar, but it's not exactly the same, right? The one is positive and the secant is going to be negative. Well, if I wanted to go ahead and rewrite that, then what exactly could I do? Well, I could just divide by a negative one on both sides. Therefore, I can now simplify this expression to a negative tangent squared of theta is equal to a positive one minus a secant squared of theta. So this isn't very important because one minus secant squared of theta is equivalent to a negative tangent squared of theta. So what I'm gonna do in this example is I'm just going to replace my one minus secant squared of theta with a negative tangent squared of theta. You could apply distributive property, but again, that's doing some math work. Why don't we just use our Pythagorean identities to simplify this? So when I do that, I get a cosine squared of theta times a negative tangent squared of theta. Now, again, the next thing we wanna be able to do is go ahead and get this simplified down to a negative secant squared. So we have the negative here. Now I could just go ahead and put in the front of this problem. But what I wanna do is I need to somehow simplify cosine squared of theta times a tangent squared. So therefore I'm only left with a sine. So this cosine squared of theta is going to have to divide out. And for it to divide out, that means I'm going to have to have a cosine in the denominator. Well, how can I rewrite tangent squared of theta with a cosine in the denominator? And to do that, all I need to simply do is use my quotient identity. Remember the tangent of theta is equal to sine of theta over cosine of theta. So the tangent squared of theta is going to equal to a sine squared of theta over a cosine squared of theta. So what I'll do is I'll just put the negative out in front and then I'll just rewrite this. Let me go and clean this up real quick. Okay, and now what you can see here is I have the cosine squared of theta, which is technically in the numerator, and this cosine squared of theta, which is in the denominator. Therefore, those are gonna divide out, leave me with a negative sine squared of theta, which is now equal to my right-hand side. Now, in the next example, you could probably make the case that the right-hand side is about just as complicated example as the left-hand side. But again, there's one thing I recognize here on the left-hand side that's not included on the right-hand side. On the left-hand side, I have a sine squared, and I don't have that on the right side. It's probably gonna be a lot easier for me to simplify without the sine than to go ahead and create a sign on the right hand side. Now we can definitely do it. It's just going to create a little bit more math for us. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to focus on this left hand side. And again, once I see this cosine squared of beta and the sine squared of beta, I immediately think to my Pythagorean identity, sine of theta plus cosine of theta equals one. But notice we're using beta here. Guess what? It doesn't matter what your angle is. I can just write this as the sine squared of beta plus the cosine squared of beta is equal to one. Now what I want you to recognize here is how this is written. I do not have my sine or my cosine isolated at all. What I can do though, is like in the last example, is I can subtract a cosine squared of beta on both sides and therefore solve for sine squared. Okay, so now you can see I have sine squared of beta is equal to a one minus cosine squared of beta. So what I can do here is I can replace a sine squared of beta with one minus cosine squared of beta. Now, why would I want to do that? The reason why I want to do that is because I want the left-hand side to be all in cosines. Why? Because I want to make it look like the right-hand side and the right-hand side only has cosines. So let's go ahead and substitute this in and see what it looks like. Okay, so now you can see though I have two cosines and it's very, very important that you recognize that I use parentheses because if you don't use parentheses, this would just write as cosine squared of beta minus one and then minus cosine squared of beta. But by using the parentheses, what that tells me is I have to distribute that negative to both terms inside my parentheses. So therefore I'll be left with a cosine squared of beta minus one plus a cosine squared of beta. Now again, just like x plus x is two x and cosine of beta plus cosine of beta is two cosine of beta, cosine squared of beta plus cosine squared 
square root of beta is going to be a two cosine square root of beta. And then we have our minus one. And hopefully now you can see that the left-hand side is exactly the same as our right-hand side. All right, now in this last example, you can definitely see that the left-hand side is definitely the side that we're gonna focus on. And so we have secant squared of negative y minus cotangent squared of pi half minus y is equal to one. We just talked about our Pythagorean identities, but that was only when we just had a trigonometric function with an angle. We just had our trigonometric function squared. We didn't have all of this stuff inside. Now, these are gonna be actually our even odd as well as our co-function identities. And it's really important to recognize that when we have trigonometric function squared, we can actually rewrite this. Now, the reason why I wanted to rewrite it like this is because now I can treat these identities a little bit more familiar version than if they were to be squared. Now, I didn't change anything by rewriting them. All I did was I just rewrote them in a different form. But typically, when we're writing down the problems, we prefer to write it as secant squared of negative y rather than the quantity secant of negative y squared. It's the exact same thing, but it's a lot easier to write it in this first form than in the second form. So that's why that is the preferred form. However, when we have like even odd identities or co-function identities, I think it's important to kind of look at them inside a parentheses of a quantity squared. So then we can realize that, oh, secant of negative y, that's just going to equal secant of y squared. And then the cotangent of pi halves minus y, that's going to be equal to the tangent of y quantity squared. Now, again, I could write it like this, or I could just go back to our familiar way of secant of y minus a tangent squared of y equals one. Now, again, we're trying to get this to equal one. Now, hopefully you remember the trigonometric identities I mentioned at the beginning of this video. And if you remember that sine and cosine are related to each other, then you're going to want to remember that secant and tangent are also related to each other. Now, again, it doesn't matter that the angle is y compared to a theta, but my Pythagorean identity with the relationship of secant and tangent is going to be a one plus a tangent squared of y is equal to a secant squared of y. That is our Pythagorean identity. See, see it right here. So the way that we're going to use this is I'm just going to replace a secant squared of y with a one plus a tangent squared. So one plus a tangent squared of y. Now you could also solve for tangent squared, but then you'd have to subtract a one on both sides and it's a little bit more math. Now this way, the reason why I like doing it this way is I don't really need these parentheses here because we're not multiplying by this whole expression. Now you can see that I just have a tangent squared of y minus a tangent squared of y, which is just going to leave me now with a one, which is now equal to the right hand side. There it goes, ladies and gentlemen. Hopefully this video was helpful for verifying trigonometric identities using your Pythagorean identities. If you want more examples of verifying trigonometric identities, check out the playlist and resources I have down below or check out the next video I have for you here.